Good morning, all. Uh, again, I'm going to wear my doctor's hat, Dr. Jay Mawinney, uh, and I want to talk about feline diabetic ketoacidosis. Now, yesterday I was talking about hyperthyroidism, and uh, this particular problem is also a middle-aged to geriatric problem in, uh, in cats, where people find that their cat is all of a sudden losing weight. And usually it happens over about a one to two month period, and uh, most of the time the cat was overweight. It was obese before this all happened. Uh, the cat has a voracious appetite right until the very end, and then all of a sudden it gets really, really sick. Uh, and this is the picture. You don't want to wait for that. If, they, if you've got a cat that's losing weight, uh, don't go online and ask... <laughs> as consulting services, or if you do, just ask uh, what I should ask my veterinarian. Because there's no magic to this. It, you need blood work, you need a urinalysis, and you need a good physical exam, and none of those things can be done online. The online uh, services, and again, I consult too, um, are very, very good as far as, gee, these are my symptoms, what should I do? As long as the people aren't expecting some prescription or some magic formula other than first aid to get you to the point that you can get to your veterinarian. It's very, very important. But getting back to the DKA or diabetes, diabetic ketoacidosis, um, what happens is the pancreas, especially in an overweight individual, has to overwork. And sooner or later, is in cats anyway, they, they tend to get a type 2 type of diabetes where uh, it's a usually chronic recurring pancreatitis that destroys the islet cells that produce the, the insulin. And, uh, and it's, it's very interesting. The, um, and now once, once things are identified, if they catch it before we're ketoacidotic, sometimes uh, the uh, Glycolytic uh, drugs, the oral um, medication that, that can lower blood sugars, uh, lipicide and some of the newer ones, uh, will, will actually control it for quite a while, especially if diet is, is corrected. Um, the Feline Practitioners Association, um, most of the people uh, espouse uh, all meat diets and actually uh, science growth and prescription CD diet and thing, all these things that are pretty much meat diets with vitamin and mineral supplements um, tend to um, help to turn things around because it's the long chain carbohydrates that build up over time and cats are carnivores unlike dogs and people who are omnivores they really do need 30 percent protein and uh, they they get a little bit of veg vegetation from the intestines that they eat when they eat in the wild, but um, for the most part, it's meat. They don't graze, they'll eat grass to help a little roughage, but they don't graze and eat berries and things like this, like, like dogs will, and well, people need a good bit of, uh, of the vegetation. We, we need the green stuff as well as, as, um, as meat. But anyway, uh, over the years with uh, processed dry foods and things like this, uh, apparently um, it builds up carbohydrate deposits in the liver to the point that things start to fail and the, and the pancreas itself starts to degenerate. Uh, the all meat diet actually can help to reverse the symptoms. Now once the cat is getting to the point of ketoacidosis where it's getting into total liver failure uh, and producing these ketones which are life-threatening um, no way will the oral glipicide or any other uh, glycolytic products uh, work by themselves and uh, usually the, the actual best insulin that is used once things are controlled is glargine which is a, a human recombinant type and it's um, it's been found to be oh, 50% better than, plus, the, better than any of the other, the PZIs and the other ones that are popular to be used in the cats. It's expensive, 
but it's the one that actually has a fighting chance to even reverse the symptoms over six months. Uh, not in every case, and sooner, sooner or later, actually, it tends to rebound anyway, and you end up having to keep them on the insulin. But I know in my cat, uh, I got a remission on the glargine and uh, an oral uh, glycolytic products in the all meat diet for almost a year uh, after I had identified uh, diabetes in my cat. Now, of course, the thing I'm <laughs> I know what I'm looking for, so there's no way my kitty got uh, ketoacidotic. This is the toxic level where if you ignore the symptoms sooner or later, you've got a cat that's flat out not eating and lateral and dying on you, and uh, that's a that's a tough way to work with things. But if uh, if that does happen, if your kitty all of a sudden goes off its food and it's been losing weight a whole lot, this isn't something to go uh, think about, oh, I'm going to get kitty in in a week or two. You get to that emergency clinic and they need round-the-clock fluids and uh, what is called regular insulin, which is very short-acting uh, but rapid-acting insulin that's uh, given uh, either every two to four hours in an injection or in a uh, continuous flow rate and uh, kept up until those uh, ketones are cleared. And then they can get to the glargine and these other things. Um, but uh, it is treatable if you can handle it. Most cats will make, make it, but uh, honestly you're going behind the eight ball when you bring them in this way and uh, not all of them make it. Uh, but time is at an es essence. You just do not wait to get treatment if your cat stops eating and is really lethargic, I don't care what the cause, get kitty in, love your pet, all they ask for is love and return and food. Hope I gave you some ideas. Have a good day.